Shanagad, Nala Dagodoa, Tashko Abadetian, Kolonai, Digi Loshan, Nole Gehi. Um, hello everyone, my name is Nola. Um, I'm 20. I'm a tour guide. Um, I'm an oral historian. Um, I do, um, we do lectures, we do programming like dances, um, just a variety of things. We meet with a lot of schools. I'm um, just mostly educating um, the public is what I do mostly. I'm also a finger weaver, um, which is one of um, just a Cherokee art form that we've had around for thousands of years. Um, so I'm still carrying it on. Um, yat ish na feather and shit, what is in this lump with bushes chin? Um, shio, then I'll get that it go down. Uh, so hello, my name is Chanel, um, Chanel Feather. I'm the education uh, program manager at the Museum of the Cherokee Indians in Cherokee, North Carolina. And I introduced myself in my Navajo language, in the Dene language, which is my mother's language. And indigenous people are matrilineal. So I always introduce myself in my mother's language because um, to the creator, I'm a Dene woman. And um, the ne is what we call ourselves. Um, my dad is Eastern Band Cherokee from right over the mountain here. And um, I grew up in Cherokee, North Carolina. And I also introduced my clans. So my clans are, um, my first clan is Bitterwater, the Dene people. And my second clan is Deer Clan um, of the Cherokee people, my dad's clan. I grew up on the top of Soko Mountain. So um, <clears throat> it's, it's a little community called Rough Branch. And so like when you go to my house, my childhood home, like you go in, you look around and you look out the window and it literally looks like you're in a tree house. Um, just so many like I, I can remember growing up like and hearing the water, you know, like um, behind my house. There's a little waterfall that I fell off of once when I was younger um, exploring. And then also um, I could hear bears. A lot of like there's I think there was a family of bears I could hear. I think I literally think one night I heard them like, scratching um, the back of my house um, and like whenever I and and, and um, crickets and I, I did not realize how much you know you take for granted the things that you have at your disposal all the time right so I didn't realize that until I left for indigenous people that sense of place I, I think for any people that sense of place is important like where did where do you originate from and like Whenever we like talk about like, I think that's one of the biggest things in you know America. Um, so many people are looking for their sense of place, like where is my origin, right? And a lot of it is because the origin isn't for majority of the people isn't here. <laughs> Everyone has been displaced, um, and you know indigenous people within our own indigenous lands, but non-indigenous people within different continents like where is that you, whenever you feel that you're like you're always searching for home um you're always searching for a piece of yourself and and it didn't hit me until that moment when i was looking in these mountains and i was like man this is the it's beautiful and here i was for 21 years of my life like just existing in this place and never even cared <laughs> I was like took it all for granted um, and it didn't hit me till then and so we teach that like sense of place you know indigenous people have this just deep understanding of what balance is and how balance works in this world um, and that's how we were, were that's why we're stewarded of this land because we understand that you know we live off of this land so it makes sense that it's our job to take care of it because we're the ones you know the trees give us oxygen you know the sunlight the water all these different things you know these things are, are given to us the least that we can do is give back, you know, take care of it, make sure it's, we're honoring that, that land the same way that it needs to be, that it's been taken care of for thousands of years. Um, and that balance falls into place, especially in like our daily lives. You know, we're, we were a matrilineal society, but then like, and we held women to a higher regard, but there was a balance there too. There was a balance and understanding between men and women. You know, the roles of women and the roles of men, there was a balance there. Um, and as an indigenous people, the more you learn, the more you talk to them, you know, you'll hear it, it'll come up and you start recognizing that balance, you'll have a, a more understanding of how we think um, and how we move and, you know, why we do things the way we do, you know, why there's an exchange of food every single time that, you know, you come and you meet somebody or you exchange gifts. Um, so there's just a balance there. So Tohi in our language uh, means, um, there's three meanings to Tohi, which is 
the first is balance. Like, how do we, um, whenever we're talking about, you know, healing and like generational healing, you know, I, I always, my, my team, I probably get so annoyed um, because I always have, oh, generational trauma, generational resistance. Like, why, why does Chanel always have to put generational or intergenerational before every word that she says? Um, so, like, generational healing, um, and that comes to this, you know, the, that point of existing now is working on that generational healing. And um, that comes with achieve, trying to understanding how do we move forward closer to Tohi. Tohi is that balance. Um, and Tohi for me is like holistic healing. So like physical, emotional, um, mental, and um, spiritual health. Um, all of those four things like you have to have in balance. And it's in that center which is Tohi. And then, so that's one thing is balance, tohi. The other thing that we called tohi was when we watched the water. And when we, when we would watch the water, if it wasn't going too fast or if it, wasn't going, if it wasn't flowing too slow or if it was just real consistent and calm, that's tohi. And so we learned, like, and that's how we should live our lives. So we learned that, like, we learned a lot of things from nature. So when we talk about that connection to land and we're looking at, you know, that um, that's a lesson right there. Um, like how that how you, how the water flows, like we'd watch the water. But, oh, why is it going so fast? Something's about to happen. Why is it? Why is it so low? Why is it slow? You know, and if it's just tohi, if it's just consistent, it's like that's where we that's good. That's where we have to stay. Mm -hmm. um, and to add a little more to that, like. Uh, the land is our original teachers, you know, when we talk about our oral history, you know, our stories going back thousands and thousands of years, a lot of our original stories, they start and begin with the animals and the plants, um, and we learn, we learn so many different things from them and we get so much from them. Um, so it's important that, you know, that we do continue taking care of the land, it's important that we do talk about climate change and, um, you know, how are we going to be better stewards? How are we going to be good um, elders? How are we going to be good ancestors? It's important that we leave it better than how we found it.